Hey everyone, a few weeks ago I did a quick review of this inverter and it performed terribly. I didn't have very high expectations considering how cheap it was, but it performed even worse than I expected. I could barely get over 100 watts before it would do a reset. With everything going on in the world, I didn't rush out to the UPS store to return it and I had some time to think about the way it was acting when it would reset itself. It didn't indicate an over or under voltage condition and definitely didn't have an over current condition going on. What I think might actually be the problem is these supplied cables that come with the inverter. I think they were starving the inverter of the amperage it needed for the loads I was running. Let me show you what I'm, I'm talking about. The manufacturer states that they only guarantee the listed wattage output if you use the supplied cables. I didn't think much of it and bolted them to my terminals and away I went using my new inverter I got on the cheap. But if you look closely, the heat shrink is too close to the hole of the lug for how wide my battery terminals are. This means that I am losing contact surface where the heat shrink is. Okay, so what I did was cut the heat shrink on this side that actually contacts the battery terminal. And then I went through and wire brushed the terminal itself because it looks like it had a bit of an oily residue on it. So I wanted to clean that off there. So I wire brushed this, cleaned up that heat shrink. So I'm going to throw this back together and let's see if we can get some better results out of this inverter. Okay, so I set this up the same way that I did in my first video. I'm going to go ahead and select battery type. And I'm going to go with AGM. And it would do 10 amps the first time. So I'm going to set it to 10 amps, make sure it still does that without any issues. And then I'm going to try going to 15 amps. Seems to be okay. Let's try 15 amps. There it goes. Okay, so I'm wondering if it might have something to do with grounded devices. Because this, and there it goes, it reset again. This has a ground plug. So I'm going to try something that doesn't have a ground plug. Now I want to try using this inverter to power this Echo 58 volt quick charger. And this is rated at 330 watts and the output is 58 volts and 5 amps. So this is quite a bit more than the other 12 volt charger I was trying out. So let's see if this will work. All right, I got it plugged in and powered up, so let's see what it does. It seems to be charging. Let's see what kind of amperage we're getting out of the battery right now. 13.3 amps. So 13.3 amps at 26.91 volts, which are what the 24 volt batteries are at right now, comes out to 358 watts. So not too bad actually as far as the efficiency goes. Okay, this heater on low pulls about 940 watts and that's way more than this inverter is designed for, but it ramps up to that pretty slowly. It takes it almost a full minute to get to that 900 watts. So I wanna see how high this will get before it shuts off because this heater does not have a ground lug. So I wanna see if it'll do it. Okay, I got it plugged in, I got everything powered up and I'm gonna turn the fan on and kick it over to one and see what my amp meter has got going on. So 12, 13, 14, 15 amps, 16 amps, 17 amps. It's doing it. 22 amps. 23. This is crazy. 25 amps. This is insane. 28 amps. 30 amps. This thing's got to kick off soon. 32. 33. 34 amps. 35 amps. 36. This is, oh, there it goes. Okay, so it went into an overcurrent protection. So that's insane. It actually got to over 900 watts before it shut off. So I do think that it's the ground lug on these things that are messing with this. So I'm going to find something else that I can use around here and I'll be back. 
Okay, so I got my Echo 58 volt battery charger, which draws around 360 watts from the batteries. I found a heating blanket that draws about 220 watts from the batteries. So I'm gonna start with this, and then I'm gonna turn on the heating blanket. So first, let's see what the battery voltage is at on the 24 volt packs. All right, so it's at 27.05 right now, and I'm gonna switch this over to amperage and hook it up to the inverter and see what kind of amperage draw we get. All right, let's go ahead and turn the inverter on. So it looks like it's drawing about half an amp right now. Let's plug this in. So 13.6 amps. And that battery is almost full anyway, so I don't think it's going to draw that for very long before it starts to taper off. Alright, so that's been running for a few minutes now, so I'm going to try turning on the heating blanket. And that jumped it up to about 19 amps. And this battery is already starting to taper off, so you can see the amperage dropping on the amp meter. Alright, so this ran for probably 10 minutes or so, and you can see by the amp meter that it is done charging, the green light is on, and it's not drawing any current anymore. And the heating blanket is up to temperature, and you'll see on the amp meter that it's pulsing between about 6 amps draw and um, shutting off, so about a half amp. So it didn't have any issues with that. It was drawn about 400 watts for 10 minutes or so. Uh, the cooling fan didn't kick on, and... I didn't see any issues otherwise. I did find this old extension cord that does not have ground plugs on it and I tried plugging that 12 volt battery charger into this and seeing if not having the ground plug connected would make a difference and it did the same thing. So I'm not sure if it's just something inside that charger that doesn't agree with this inverter or if the inverter has seen a weird surge from that thing but I don't know why it doesn't work and all of these other things do that draw a lot more current, but it's really weird. So I have the Kodiak charger plugged into this now, and it draws around 120 watts or so. So I'm just gonna let it go and see if it'll fully charge the Kodiak. All right, so I left the Kodiak plugged in overnight and let it charge up, and everything went off without a hitch. There was no issues, so that was kind of a an endurance test, I guess, and it seemed to work okay. I have this little four cup coffee maker. This coffee maker draws about 650 watts. So if this inverter will cycle this coffee maker, I will say that this inverter has completely redeemed itself and is worthy of the investment if you aren't super picky on what it can power because it seems to be hit or miss so far. So let's see if this thing will power it. Twenty six and a half amps. So this thing is definitely running full bore right now. It's over six hundred watts. Okay, so this thing just ran 650 watts for about six and a half minutes. The cooling fan for the inverter did come on four times, but that's amazing. I'm completely impressed by that. The, the, the coffee maker's still on. Oh, there goes the cooling fan. The coffee maker's still on, um, but it's done brewing the pot of coffee. So you'll see now the amp meter only says it's drawn the idle half amp, 0.6 now to run the fan, but here in a few seconds the heating element oh, just turned on. So now it's drawing the 26.6 amps again. So it's pulling 650 watts right now and I'm pretty sure it would do this indefinitely. I don't think that it's an issue. I'm amazed by this. I, I, don't, I don't even know what else to say. So it turns out that this inverter is completely capable of the 600 watts continuous claim. It does seem to be hit or miss on what it can power though. So far, I have powered my Echo 58 volt battery charger, my Kodiak charger, my desktop t uh, computer and a TV as a monitor, my cordless drill charger, and a heating blanket. 
It was unable to power my 12 volt battery charger at higher amperages and it couldn't run my 3D printer which draws around 300 watts when heating the print bed. After doing all this testing, I'm not convinced that it has anything to do with plugs having a ground, but there are definitely some things it can power extremely well and others it stumbles with. If anyone has more information on why some things work and some don't, please comment below. So for $70, I have changed my mind and think it is absolutely worth buying, but it is buyer beware that you may not be able to power certain items. If you are willing to accept that risk, this is probably the cheapest 600 watt inverter you can buy. Alright everyone, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.